So in this video, we're gonna show you how to build one of the best home automation platforms to host all things home automation and media serving. And well, first thing you need is a Raspberry. Nope. No, we're not using any type of small little microcomputer because it just won't get the job done. So the first thing you're going to need is, of course, you're going to need the USB flash drive that you're going to put in the computer itself. Now, you typically don't need any massive size or anything. And, well, a lot of the flash drive prices are just kind of just so cheap now that I just like to go with, say, a 32 gig, which is still even 32 gig is overkill, but will work fine. Now, one thing to note, you do get a... 30 day trial of Unraid itself. So you can definitely try things out, but the license key is tied to the unique ID of the flash drive. So additionally, when you do buy the license, it will tie to the USB drive. Now they do have procedures and whatnot. If of course, if a USB flash drive dies and you can transfer your license through their support. So first what you need to do is download the install and they do actually have a pretty cool little tool so you can download the little USB creator for Mac, Windows, etc. Of course, if you are using something else, they do have a getting started guide and you can go download the files manually and put it on that USB key that way. So as of the recording of this video, 6.9.1 is the stable version. And I like to come over here and hit customize and that way you can change the server name. And if you wanted to do a static IP, which is one of the recommendations I make, or you can do DHCP, just make sure you do reserve that DHCP to a IP that will never change. And that's usually called like DHCP reservation or whatever it might be. Now this can depend on your BIOS on the hardware itself. And that is another thing I would highly recommend to check with the manufacturer of your motherboard itself and download and upgrade the BIOS to the latest and well, potentially greatest version. There are a lot of different vulnerabilities and patches and microcode stuff with different processors that will be in those BIOS upgrades. Now, if you don't know what it is, you can go ahead and check it. If it still won't boot for you, come back in here and make another one and just don't check it this time. And Yep, that's the only one. We're going to hit right. It allows you to confirm because you're going to erase everything. It's going to download the package from Unraid itself. Hurry up and wait. Don't pull it out before it finishes doing its thing and make sure you do properly eject the USB drive from your operating system. Ejected our flash drive and we'll go pop it into our little micro server. So once you do have things booted up and you've upgraded all your BIOS and whatever it might be and connected all your various hard drives up, you can hook a monitor up to the system, but you can run it headless, meaning you don't have to have a screen, keyboard, whatever. There is a local terminal that you can log into if you'd like to, but typically it's not needed. It will show you the IP address on that screen, but of course you can just check your router and then browse on over to the IP address. Now you will need an internet connection to get your little trial key. And they talk about that here and probably don't want to purchase right away. Just go ahead and say get trial. And again, it will tie it to that USB flash drive that you're using. So yep, we'll start the trial. And the first screen you're going to get is, hey, what do you want to assign your parity to? So we'll drop down the first one. I have that 6 terabyte, 2 terabyte, 1.5, and then this is that SSD we're going to use. We don't want to use that one. Your parity is always going to be your largest drive. 
So we'll go ahead and set that one. Now remember, you can put a second parity. We're not going to do a second parity at this time. You can change that at a later point, add drives, etc. Disk 1, doesn't really matter the order here. We're going to do the 2 terabyte and we're going to do the 1.5. Now it will erase all the data on the parity drive, so do keep that in mind. And several of the other drives, it probably may format those as well. You're gonna to wanna to start out with blank drives. So we're just needing a pool, and you can create a pool of cache data drives. We're just doing one. The name is gonna be cache. We're gonna do one slot. We're gonna add that one pool. So the screen will refresh and it's going to ask us for our cache drive. I do highly recommend using a cache drive. I did try when I very first started, I didn't have a cache drive and VMs were absolutely slow. So was some of the Docker containers, just don't do it. SSD drives are so inexpensive. So once you get that assigned, it refreshes the page and then you have your one boot device. That's going to be that USB drive that stays in the back of the computer itself or wherever you want to put it at. And we'll just go ahead and try to hit start. Yours may differ based on the different drives you may use or the different formats they have. It may ask you different questions. Just kind of go through and follow the instructions to get things going. Now, one thing to keep in mind is now it's going to build that parity drive with all that data, even though there is no data, and that could take some time, so be prepared for that. And you will still be able to use stuff, even though it's doing that. Now, one thing I did wanna cover in arrays, before you get too deep into things, if you want to encrypt your hard drives, and what's the good thing about that? Well, think about, if you have a hard drive that's under warranty, and you have to send it in for some reason, you don't want them being able to access your data or if something happens to your computer, you don't want anybody to access your data. So it's not a bad idea to encrypt your array. Go ahead and click on the disk you want to encrypt. So we'll hit disk one. See it says file system type. We're gonna leave ours XFS, but we're gonna do XFS encrypted. And then we'll hit done. And we'll do that to the second drive, XFS encrypted. And it will go ahead and format these drives as encrypted. Now, once you've done that, you'll notice down here, there is the encryption status. Enter a new key. There's an encryption input. You want to do a key file, but do keep in mind, never lose that key file because if you lose it, then you can't unencrypt your drives. Your passphrase, a lot of times it is a lot easier to save that. So we're gonna do a passphrase. So we got our passphrase in, we show the passphrase, it's the same, make sure you do save it, and then we'll go ahead and hit start. So yes, you do want to mount those two drives. It's gonna format them, so yes. I'm gonna nuke the data off of them. So that is one key thing you'll want to make the decision on is if you want to do encrypted drives, you want to start with encrypted drives. It could be difficult because you have to pull the data off and then format the drive and then encrypt it, et cetera, and put the data back. And we'll get the array starting down here at the bottom. It's going to say starting services. And there we go. Now, one thing right away I do want to jump into is under settings and go to display settings. And there it is, the color theme. Let's do black and see what that looks like. You're typically gonna have the main page that comes up and it will show you your hard drives. And they'll show you like green lights or red lights or exclamation showing you that there's some issue with it. And right now it's showing us that on that parity, the parity is invalid. So that's typical because well, we just put that hard drive in. Now, other things you'll want to take note of down here towards the bottom, just like a typical computer, you don't want to do a, a dirty shutdown. You'll want to do a proper shutdown, so make sure you do have a battery backup. It's highly suggested also to connect 
that battery backup through USB. Unraid supports it straight out of the box from most battery backups like the APCs and such and cyber powers and plug up the USB and that way it will know when that battery starts to get low, it'll automatically shut down your system and that way you don't have to do any type of parity checks because it'll go through and it to check all your drives and it takes time. So do a proper shutdown when you're doing things to the system. So the dashboard, some of this you can configure. You can change the picture if you want. Uh, it shows you the motherboard, the BIOS information. It'll show you the CPUs. It also, if, depending on your board, you may have the virtual CPUs out here, the memory, the whole nine yards. Now, one thing you do wanna do right off the bat in your system is go to the Unraid website, just Unraid Net, and you can really just Google for Unraid and do community apps. You wanna install the community apps plugin and you'll see why. It makes it stupid simple to install stuff. So we'll come in here and you should get the installation. Pretty simple to install this plugin, paste the following URL into the plugins install plugin section. So we'll go to plugins on your server, hit install plugin. There's the URL, we'll paste it in and we'll hit install. It'll download pretty quick, hit done. And you may have to force a refresh of the page if you don't see it. What it's gonna add in is a apps right here. So say for instance, you want to install Home Assistant Core. Home Assistant Core, hit the little button and you can just accept the defaults here. Go ahead and hit apply. It's gonna automatically pull down all the Docker container info, extract it, it's gonna install it, set up the folder, whole nine yards. Pretty difficult, isn't it? And you'll notice I have not touched the command line at all yet. All right, once it's pulled, it'll do the commands for you. Hit done. And if you jump over to the Docker tab, you'll notice you have, there's Home Assistant Core right there. And if you want to jump into it and see what's going on with it, you can click on the icon and go to Web UI. And there's Home Assistant waiting for you to do the onboarding of Home Assistant itself right there. Now, there are other things we'll want to install. Say, for instance, if you want to do the Node Red thing, go ahead and hit install. And we'll go ahead and accept the defaults. Let it pull that one. And some containers, they're smaller, so they're gonna pull down a lot quicker and extract quicker. Basically go through various different pieces that you may want, like Zigbee to MQTT. Tons of different software. There's Frigate we talked about earlier. And you can see it's really simple to install stuff. We'll jump back in here to the Docker containers and you'll see that we have MQTT, Node Red, Tasmo Backup. Now like MQTT, you'll notice there's there's not really a web UI that's going to just bring you to the MQTT page, but like say node red, you're going to have the web UI there. And also like Tasmo backup, you're going to have the web UI there as well. And you can just go ahead and make shortcuts to these instead of having to go jump into them. Now, as you start to do that, you'll notice the dashboard now has the Docker containers that build on the side. And there is some additional options if you go into Docker and it's, it's defaulted to basic view. I'm going to turn that on to advanced view and that will also show you more of the port mappings. It'll show you the volume mappings, like basically the volume mappings or folders map from your cache drive to a folder that's actually in the Docker container itself. And the Docker container, basically, if you don't know what those are, and I'm sorry if I didn't explain this earlier, is think of it's like a highly efficient virtual machine. It's already set up by the developer of everything that's needed, and it will all kind of run self-contained inside that container. 
but you don't want to store your data and your logs, etc., inside the container itself, because then when the container is replaced, well, there goes all your data. So the data stays outside of the container and that will be on your cache drive. And all the defaults basically just have that set up already for you. You can see all the CPU memory loads of all the different Docker containers. Hey, I want this to auto start on a reboot. Sure enough, just change the little switch. It will go ahead and start up for you. Now, if you do miss some of the little initial setup that's actually in the containers themselves, if you do click on the container and hit edit, it's going to show you those same settings. And if you wanted to change the repository or whatever it might be, you can go through and change the settings and just hit apply and it will repull the Docker container if necessary and do the command all for you. Now, one thing I do like to set up, say on your MQTT server is the passwords. If you look in the actual app data folder itself, so if you browse over to the IP address, you'll see you get different folders and however you want to do this is totally up to you. Whether you want to use say SSH or Samba or whatever it is, I just happen to be using Samba. If you go into the app data, you'll notice now you have these folders and that was the folders. Well, we installed the Docker containers. So there's MQTT. And if we look back, what were they saying? Look at the passwords.readme in the config folder. So here's the passwords.readme. It's basically saying that the passwords like to be encrypted. And what you'll need to do is just store a file called passwords.txt in this directory and restart the Docker container. It will pull them in automatically and delete your old passwords file. It just will encrypt them. So don't forget your passwords. So we'll make a new file in here, new text document, passwords.txt. We'll just call it my MQTT is the user. And then we'll just do something backwards of like MQTT. How about my? So now we'll go to Docker and we'll get MQTT and we'll do a restart. We'll look in that folder, we'll refresh it, and you'll notice our passwords.txt is now missing, and it did update the passwords in QTT. If you want to take a look at it, you'll notice that it does a encrypted password of the user my in QTT. So there we go, we've got a user set up, and now let's go jump into Home Assistant. So we'll put in here, did you blur? And you'll notice we're not going to be using supervisor here and that's totally up to you. But if you're doing all of this and you have the ability, don't install supervisor it's so much easier. You be the supervisor and it's that simple. And we're looking at home assistant. Now let's point it to our MQTT server real quick. We'll add MQTT. And don't be scared of MQTT. MQTT is so simple and it just works. We'll do the 204, which we're at. And we did my MQTT, MQTT, my. And we'll leave in discovery enabled and we'll hit submit. And that's it for MQTT. So just to check out MQTT real quick, I do have a little smart switch we can play with and set up. We'll go to configuration. MQTT. So we'll put in our IP address of our Unraid box, leave everything the same, hit save. And just to verify our MQTT is working, we'll go to the console of Tasmoda. You can see we have our MQTT connected. So let's jump back to Home Assistant and we'll add an integration. Tasmoda. You want to set up Tasmoda? We'll sure do. Hit finish. So we've got the integration set up and automatically we know MQTT is working. We have our one device. That is our little smart switch. And there it is. We can turn it on and off. You can see it shows it on probably in the console. We turned it on and off a lot. MQTT is working. It's really that simple.
to set up Home Assistant MQTT on a system, no supervisor. You control the upgrades. You control when things get changed, various pieces and parts and breaking changes or whatever it might be. Really simple. Now, one little tip I did want to show that well, some people don't know how to do it. I, you upgraded a container and you don't like that new version just yet. You want to roll back to an, a different version, say, of Home Assistant. If you go back to the Docker tab on Unraid itself, it'll say the repository Home Assistant right here. Just go ahead and click it. It's going to jump you straight into Docker itself, the Docker hub. Go to Tags and say we want to pull in the developer version. We don't want to use the latest stable version. You want to be on that latest and greatest cutting edge. You just simply take the tag or you can copy the little piece here. You see how they'll have Home Assistant colon dev. So if you just copy that piece, we won't use the Docker pool, but I like to copy and paste. I don't like we have more fat finger stuff. Click and hit edit on the container you want. And you see the repo here? Go ahead and paste that in. Now remember, you don't want that Docker space pool. There it is, colon dev, hit apply. It automatically goes, oh, there's a different container. It's going to pull that new container for you, change it to the dev tab. It's going to start it up for you. It's that simple. If you want to change, go to an older version. Go find that older version, scroll down there, put that older version in there, and hit, hit save, and it rolls it back. It's that simple to roll back to a previous version. But just in case, you'd always want to make sure you do have your data from that app data folder backed up. In one of our next videos, we're going to jump around. I'll show you what different plugins I like to run and how to set up, say, Node-RED connected to Home Assistant Core. And we'll even look at Tasmo Backup and different things and set up the shares and different users. It's really simple to go do all this right here, pretty much through the GUI. And there's so many different applications and Docker containers that you can run. You'll just be digging through and just going through like a kid in a candy store. Well, I appreciate you hanging out and hopefully you did learn something today. And well, if, definitely give us a like down below, smash that button. And yeah, probably should be a subscriber because we're gonna do pretty much a bunch of other videos showing different pieces and parts of making things much easier in your home with a type of media server and home automation server. And yeah, the hard drives, the hardware, whatever it might be, you may have some stuff like that just laying around or somebody's throwing something out and whatever the age may be and just have fun with the hardware and learn some things and that way you can figure out what's the best for you and not the best that someone else wants to tell you is the best because not everyone has the budget to afford the best. So I appreciate everyone for watching, subscribing, liking, commenting, whatever it might be. And y'all take care. And I do appreciate all the Patreon subscribers. It definitely helps bring new products and projects to the channel each week. Where are you going? We're going zip lining. So I wanted to be first, but there's a, but one time there was two. What? Two zip lines, and, oh. and there was a race, and, and I was in the team up with somebody, and they beat me. Just hold those all the way through. Super cool obstacle course. Am I doing it, Dad? Yep, you're doing it, dude. Take your time. Only, only a couple more steps. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. You did it. Hey. Alright, you ready? Alright, go ahead. <laughs>
job. Good job. Oh, you got it. <laughs> oh, yay. You ready? Like this. You ready? See you later. See you later!